All right. Good morning. Good morning. See, it's uh, July the second. Yeah. Third. <laughs> third. 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 Yeah, because tomorrow is Monday the fourth of July. Woo! That's what I thought. Praise God. T A Trucks dot Wilcox Arizona for the truck trucker service. Praise God, you're all here this morning for listening in. I'll be. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to be in Romans 5. So I'll be in several places, but we'll start there. But first, I want to pray, Heavenly Father God, we just love you and praise you. Thank you for the day. Thank you for this cool weather we're having out here in Arizona, in the Wilcox area. With all the rain, Lord God, we've been praying for it. And we're faithful to be doers, and you're faithful to, to listen to our prayers, Lord God. We love you and praise you and thank you for all this. In the Son's name of Jesus, amen. So the other day, my daughter... Uh, my middle daughter Rebecca called me uh, I usually don't stay up late for some reason I wasn't tired then like at 1030 I get a phone call and uh, earlier she had called us in the week and pretty distraught but uh, this time she called and uh, she, she just said I'm sitting out here in the dark looking up to the sky and am I stupid for doing that I'm like, no, honey, billions of people have throughout history have looked up into the sky and asked those questions. We were talking about that. You can't look at creation and not think, you know, there's something bigger. There's got to be something more, something magnificent made this that I look up at and is magnificent. And, uh, but she was asking me, but Dad, how, how do I know what I'm looking for? You know, how, how do I know? You know, first of all, I just want to praise Jesus. Um, thanking him that you know my children can and they do call me praise God um, praise God I've given my life to the kingdom of heaven and through surrender conviction and the written word my life has changed as I am kingdom minded so when I was asked what to look for I said well first Let's make sure we look at kingdom-minded things, is what I told her. Because if we just look for the worldly stuff, like Brother Mike was saying earlier, you, you know, if it's worldly speech, you get worldly speech back. <laughs> you know, if you're looking for worldly stuff, all you get is worldly stuff. And there is stuff that we need to operate in this world, but if you're kingdom-minded, we're going to get into that. Uh, that's where you want to be first, is... Uh, Listen to the Abba Father through his word in that relationship like I just talked about. So, so in Romans, let me flip back here, 5, 1, uh, 1 through, yeah, Romans 5, 1 through 5, it says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith in, the, in this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations produce perseverance, and per perseverance produces character, and character to hope. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So right there, <clears throat> also I took her to Matthew 7, but right there, you know, first of all, if we're looking for kingdom-minded stuff, Jesus came and he, he justified us through faith. And we've been given peace. We have access or, or an open door. Like I said, my... My, if my children call me, my keypad and my phone aren't locked and I haven't blocked them. There, there's an open access for them to talk to me. And we have an open access of faith into his grace, into this grace. You know, we stand and rejoice and we hope. And then, but at the same time, it says in there, you're going to have to put up with some mess. So if you're in the middle of a mess and you're looking up trying to figure out what is it I'm looking for, well, you know, we're in a broken world and we have to put up with it. But he's saying here, tribulations produce perseverance. It means we can, we can triumph through it, not, 
oh, what am I going to do? <laughs> we can per you persevere when you stand in the knowing that, like we just sung that song, it's the best news ever. The best news ever because the fight's already been won. So when more fiery darts come, we can persevere through that stuff. And in that perseverance, it builds our Christian character. It's like if the more you fight with the Wall Street and stuff and put money into Wall Street, is you know, the more you persevere and do it, you're gonna you're gonna produce maybe more money or whatever. Like the more you the more hogs you grow, the more bacon you can make. But you gotta do some work, right? You're gonna well through all this stuff that we have to do in the world, what we're gonna produce is character. And not personal character, but kingdom-minded character. Because when we're kingdom-minded, that's when we have hope. I was, sharing, I was sharing earlier about a gentleman we spoke to yesterday. I got to share him with these verses. It's like you're going through a mess with you and your old lady. There's stuff going on, but it's, you're gonna persevere through character, and, but hope is the, the end of it all. And so I think my daughter was looking up, hoping to receive something. And it says here that hope does not disappoint. Amen. But also it goes back to the Holy Spirit that was given us. And uh, Brother Mike said earlier, you're either in one kingdom or another. You're either in the kingdom of the, the Father's dear son or you're in the kingdom of darkness. You know, And uh, there ain't no hope in the kingdom of darkness. <laughs> so right on time, Mike, our conversations, again, go perfect with the word. And I'll share what Mike shared. You know, today, you can't wait in the hope that you might get saved. You need to take care of that today. So I thank my brother for sharing his heart this morning because it goes right into this word. So, like I said, I give my life to the kingdom of heaven through surrender, conviction, and the written word. My life has changed, and now I'm kingdom-minded. So now, the, the verse uh, that we all... Uh, think about is where Jesus says uh, where do you go? I'm sorry. As we knock and we seek and we ask. Yes, Matthew 7. Flip back here. So that reads Matthew 7 starting in verse 7 is, is keep, keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. It's not that we get it one time. A lot of stuff we have to continue because we because we have to go through tribulations to persevere, that means we have to keep knocking and seeking to have Daddy help us through the Holy Spirit, right? Just not, oh, I, I got, I got the whole world's problems in my back pocket. I'm good. No, you know, keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. Verse seven: Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. We just read earlier that there's a door access. There's an access to His grace. The door will be open to you. Verse 8, for everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Or what man is there among you, if his son asks for bread, he will give him a stone, or if he asks for a fish, he will give him a serpent. If you, then being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is heaven give good things to those who ask him? So same thing. I'm kingdom-minded. I'm the child of God. I sought my father whenever my child sought her father. And what he gave me isn't world. He gave me the word to share with my daughter. Because apart from the peace and the hope and uh, everything we get after we surrender and we uh, confess in our mouths and we believe in our hearts and we, and, uh, we repent, because of the work of the cross on Jesus Christ and our life has changed. Without all that, it is just talking points. Because uh, people read a lot of people read this and they think they, they're, they're worldly minded, they're going to get something out of it. But then again, it goes back to what you sow is what you reap. And if you're sowing kingdom minded stuff, you, that's what you're going to sow into people is the word of God because the, 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 word, of, the word of God is on your mind. So that's what I was seeking was the word. And uh, I, I didn't do nothing, but as soon as she started talking, that's right where the Lord took me. I, I'm not a, a deep theologian that knows all the addresses. 
Daddy does, and the Holy Spirit resides in me. We talked about that earlier there in Romans, that, that the Holy Spirit that's given to us resides in me, and the Holy Spirit knows the Word, and is the Word, third person of God, so it took me right to where I needed to go in the Word. So we'll continue here. You know, it says that God, uh, the Father who is in heaven, will give good things to you if you ask Him. Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, also do to them, for this is the law of the prophet. Some people call that the golden rule. You know, doing to others, you'd have them doing to yourself. That's where they get that from. But once again, that twisting of the word to, for, for a nice refrigerator and magnet saying is, uh, you, you know, be nice to other people who will be nice to you. Is that your whole goal? Because some people just aren't nice, no matter how nice you are to them, you know. Uh, but whenever we speak the word, do unto others. You know, I, I want to speak the word into people's lives. Eh? So praise God, you know, that's what the Lord gave me as soon as me and my daughter started started speaking. I started writing this stuff down. Because whenever we, whenever we knock and we seek and we ask, we will be challenged through growth. Because if, my, if the tribulation my, in my, I'm in doesn't produce character, I cannot grow to, uh, I can hear the words, but I'm not going to be in a, a little more mature place to receive the words because I haven't grown. So that character is also that we will be challenged through growth. Uh, and the growth part, we'll get to that here, is, is in uh, 1 Corinthians 9, is that we have to compete and run the race that we were just saying earlier. Some people are hearers. But don't just be a hearer, but also a doer. So in 1 Corinthians uh, uh, 9, well, let me get down here first. It says, uh, sorry, <clears throat> through the challenge of, of the growth when we ask and we seek and we run this race, it says, seeking is not for the things of the world. You can follow man's slash the world's law and you will receive that which you seek. But when we run the race of being a disciple, joint heir, an empowered believer, the bride, the child of the king, when, whenever we operate in that place, whenever we run those races, whenever we're kingdom-minded, first of all, of who I am in the kingdom, you know, uh, I must run as if I will receive a crown and, not late, and just not a crown later in a sweet by and by. So I was crowned with grace that when my daughter called me, I spoke to her and, and our relationship grew. I was crowned right then and there because I was kingdom minded. I didn't give her a bunch of go to Wall Street advice. And, and we just sang that, that. That song was like saying, get a haircut, and get a job and your life will be all better. <laughs> she's got all that now. <laughs> and she's still looking up. Praise God. So in 1 Corinthians 9, it talks about where Paul talks about uh, running that race. And it starts in 24 to 27. And the heading here is striving for a crown. See, I wasn't going to give my daughter a whole bunch of worldly advice because she already had a job and everything and, and, and whatever. And I had a place to stay and whatever. But whenever we operate and be here be doers just not hearers we get these crowns of life and like i said it's not just in the sweet by and by that we receive all these crowns is we get them today because because that's where the hope comes in because we actually know that what we're speaking will cause hope in the other person's life you know they they might be striving to tribulation but they don't have the depth that, like we have through the Holy Spirit to persevere. That's why they're stuck still looking up or looking unto worldly things. And they're just not, you know, you keep feeding yourself full of worldly stuff, you're going to get that. So we're striving for a crown. The greatest crown would be, like Brother Mike was saying, is if you repent and believe today and you become a believer, you know, you get a crown right then and there, praise God. It's just not in the sweet by and by that these things happen. So verse 24 here says, Do you not know that those who run in a race and 
<clears throat> excuse me, those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize. In, <clears throat> excuse me, run in such a way that you may obtain it. Just don't be a hearer, but a doer. Make sure that what you're doing is kingdom-minded action. Verse 25, and everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they, now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. The, that, that stuff of the world, if you're still looking for the world stuff out there, you know, Jesus talks about the moths come and the rust comes and the thieves come and it's all temporary. But these crowns of us uplifting one another, no matter where you're at, with the word of God and this hope in the, the, the best news ever, like the song we just sang, that this crown that you get whenever you're born again now also compels us to continue in a brand new race. We're no longer in the rat race. You know, uh, you're not taking none of this rat race stuff to you or with you into heaven. The only thing you're taking into heaven is other people. <laughs> so why would I look for uh, uh, any other crown but the glory of uh, other people coming to the Lord? <clears throat> Verse 26, Therefore I run thus, not with un uncertainty, that goes back to that hope thing. We, we have hope. We know when we speak that the word does not come back void. Praise God. So I don't, I don't do this. I don't get up here every Sunday and, and go run around in Tucson on a motorcycle with, oh, I hope everything gets better. We speak life into people's lives. Just sometimes by showing up, it's called the ministry of presence. And then maybe we'll get a phone call or, or whatever. And, you know, we, uh, we had a lady just the other day. Uh, she worked at one of the uh, bigger motorcycle shops. She got real sick, and then she passed away. But praise God, two, they called us, and two of our BSC brothers went and visited with her and her family. Praise God, you know. Uh, and, there, and that's what it is. Therefore, I run thus, not with uncertainty, thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. We're, we're fighting not to victory we're fighting from victory that's what that means I'm not up here like oh I'm just struggling no 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 we go in we go right into battle we're standing up we're sure we got that hope we got faith the fiery darts come and we start getting those weird phone calls like we are talking about earlier you can't do that it doesn't work like that we ain't gonna show up to your bubble bus like okay you know, but I, I'm not fighting with them and I'm not beating against the, their, you know, we're not in a battle of flesh and blood, you know, principles, principalities. But it says here that I fight not as one who beats the air, verse 27, but. You gotta love those buts in the Bible, man. <laughs> but I discipline my body and bring it into submission or subjection, least when I have preached to others. I myself should become disqualified. That's kind of what I was talking about earlier. You know, uh, maybe sometimes what you're doing you think isn't being very effective. Well, how about you pray or you go with somebody else and you all pray together that somebody else shows up. <laughs> you know, because even the disciples at one point, remember, they, uh, people came to Jesus and said, well, your boys ain't getting it done, man. What's wrong? <laughs> Right? They had to, you know, they weren't getting stuff done. People weren't getting healed. They said right to Jesus, your, your disciples, ain't, they ain't getting it done. You know, so, but I, it says here, I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, at least when I have preached to others. I myself should become disqualified. You know, but we run this race, like I said, as, as disciples. And, but just not... These students that are hoping in one day to get a certificate. You know, uh, our, our certificate in order to operate, because someone asked a question the other day, you know, I don't, I don't like Paul's writings. Where did he get the authority? He got it from the one that can only give authority. I talked about that when uh, I was saying, you know, Satan tried to get it from Adam and Eve. 
Okay, well, first he tried to get it from angels. Then he tried to get it from Adam and Eve. And then when he met Jesus in the desert, the one with authority told him to get lost. So who do you think is the one that gives authority to Paul? That's when he met Jesus on the road to Damascus and his life changed. He, he Now we're reading where he brings his body in subjection that, that when he preaches, because remember, they didn't like him at first. Like, oh, you used to, you used to beat up on the, the new believers and you used to persecute the way, you know, and, and uh, so they, they didn't like him. But now what he's saying here is, yeah, sure, he can, you know, he's talking about boasting and all kinds of stuff, but he could have boasted in all of his works is in the temple and being on the Gamamel and being the best, you know, Pharisees, uh, the number two Pharisee underneath the best Pharisee, you know what I'm saying? But he, he, he had to stop running his mouth and, but actually be more kingdom minded about who he's standing in front of and he's talking to. Cause those are important things. We have to be, so yesterday when I was talking to that gentleman, what this stuff I had wrote down was perfect. <laughs> Right on time to share with that guy. All these same things. So, you know, a lot of times when I'm writing this stuff, I still think, I ask the question, why am I right? It's just the weirdest place that he would take me to, but I end up directly using it for somebody or directly for me in my life. And uh, But if we're going, if we're running the race, and now we're kingdom-minded in order to preach the gospel to all the world, and, it, and we're not preaching the statues and the monkeys, you were preaching to other people. Well, I, I got to do it the way that I don't I don't disqualify myself. As you know, as soon as I start talking, because uh, there's a video about what's the most stumbling question for Christians, and the guy said some guru asked him. Uh, I watched it again the other day because somebody else was watching it. Because uh, it's a good heading for a title for a thumbnail to click on. You know, oh, wow, see, let, me, let me see what the most stumbling question is. So you're telling me the only way to God is through Jesus Christ. Yeah. I was like, that's the most stumbling question? What? He goes, well, I didn't, well, didn't want to offend the person in their culture. I said, the whole New Testament is where they went through the new world at that time. From Rome all the way over to Asia. And offended every culture with the gospel. Because <laughs> every culture was opposite. It was worldliness compared to the gospel. Right? Amen. So you're afraid to offend culture? What book are you reading? <laughs> culture is worldly mindedness. And today we have the sin culture of pride. You know, it's Pride Month. Or Pride Month just ended. You know, like one people say... Uh, American veterans get one day a year and the pride, the, the, the alphabet community, the alphabet mafia is what they call them now, they get a whole month. They get a whole month but our American soldiers get one day. Our, our, our independence day tomorrow, or you know, tomorrow is one day. And I'm not allowed to offend culture. I, I, don't, I don't understand that. So, in order for me to run and subject my, my body and run so I don't get disqualified, that's a good question. Because I can tell you what, in the biker community, they, they hold you accountable to who you say you are. If you say that you're for one of the many, many uh, main clubs, you're for the 81, or if you're for the black and white, you know what I'm saying? If you, if you're, if you're for them, you need to stand and say that that's who you're supporting. So if they're going to come to me and ask me, well, Gus, are you sure that's the only way to get into heaven is through your Jesus? I would lose all credibility if I was acting worldly, cussing like a sailor, uh, flirt with every half-dressed woman at, at that come to these events, right? I would still be acting worldly. And I'm telling you right now, they would, they would already judge my effort to where I, I'm not uh, being a believer, and they would never come up to me with that question to begin with. But the thing about it is because they see your actions are other than what is usually happening in their world, and that's why they're posing the question to you, because they see that there's something different. You may have long hair and tattoos, and ride a bike and have a you have a, a club looking vest on 
But uh, you don't act like us completely. And that's that spirit that's, that's already been given to us in us. And that's the spirit that's drawing them. And so if Jesus is residing in us, and all men are drawn to Jesus, right? Then they're not really being drawn to me and my good works. They're being drawn to the spirit of God that's inside of me. That's why a lot of times we just call it the ministry of presence. Because we don't know when we show up where they're at. Just like yesterday, that guy was having a hard time with him and his, and his wife. I didn't, know, I didn't know that was going to happen. But who did they seek out? Who did he seek out to talk to? Praise God. You know? And I need to do these things in a fashion where, like I said, also, I'm empowered already. I'm empowered as a disciple, uh, a joint heir, a believer, a bride, a child of the king. And uh, I'm not in hope that I might get a crown but daddy sees everything. Praise God, man. You know? And I will receive in hope. And when I compare, you know, this daily living with, like I was saying, worldly minds or kingdom minds, when I compare the two, today with some depth of hanging out with other believers and being submitted to other believers, just not thinking I'm an island to myself and I'm so, I've heard this before, I'm self disciple I, I don't understand that statement. But when I get around these people, I see how their lives are simplistic to the kingdom of God and how daddy wants to give us bread and fish, not stones and serpents. <laughs> and our lives are okay today. They're not perfect. They're not golden. But today they're okay because he is in us. And uh, if I compare it daily, when I pick up uh, my cross today and I and I bury the old man and live in this new life the new life consists of relationship, knowledge faith, truth and surrender by these I find what I'm seeking by, by these I find what I'm looking for so that's what I had to share with my daughter was if you're still looking you need to do it with kingdom mindedness and praise God because she asked me that's what I gave her and uh, someone had posted the other day on Facebook that uh, uh, God punishes believers I was like where did you get that from didn't put a Bible verse behind it or nothing but generally this guy's got a ton of stuff on his page and, and uh I was like, look, man, it, uh, Daddy, don't throw monkey wrenches, dude. He's not out to, he's not out to throw a lightning bolt out you, you know. Uh, he, he is like we just read. He has given us access by the Holy Spirit that's inside of us, and through relationship. I, I tabernacle, he tabernacles with me through the Holy Spirit that resides in me just like I tabernacle with my wife through that relationship I have to apply the knowledge of the word on how to act accordingly even, even to run the race of marriage I've got to run it so I don't get disqualified right? Yeah. same thing so, and I do that through the knowledge of applying the word so through relationship and knowledge and then I have to have faith hope but not like a, what am I going to do, hope, but, you know, belief, faith, that this word applied will cause, uh, cause growth. And, and then whenever we see it, it, that's when it becomes true. Whenever I deal with whatever issue I have with the word first in my relationship, I'm growing. And then I can look at all that, but if I then don't surrender to what I've been given the knowledge of, in what a, I can be given faith, truth, and knowledge, but if I don't surrender and then, and then apply it, you know what I'm saying, then I won't get those crowns and I won't have that growth and I won't, uh, I won't uh, uh, receive today that what I'm looking for. And what I'm looking for is, is peace. 
and I want to give peace. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. You know, um, the, the, it's the old man that I pick up, and that's where Paul says that I, I, I discipline my body and bring it into subjection. Because if I, if I pick up that old dead body, then I'm picking up the old man, and I'm no longer operating in faith because now I'm operating in flesh. Uh, I've denounced my relationship with God because I think I know better with this knowledge. I no longer am viewing the word, which is the truth. And, uh, and then, then at no time will I surrender. You know, my, my buddy Reverend Earl uh, once said, people, they ain't got no conviction because they ain't got no word. And if they ain't got no word, they ain't got no conviction. <laughs> you ain't got no conviction because you ain't got no word. And because you ain't got no word, you're not going to have conviction. So this the whole idea that God punishes believers is, is just a, a really twisted thing. Because it's my relationship with this word, with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, with this access door that, we're, that we just read about. Through all of that... It causes me to have growth, and I and I, I then I bury the old man a little bit deeper. <laughs> That's what that is. He's not he's not punishing me into burying the old man. My conviction to live this new life and to be effective in the new kingdom I'm a part of, I have to bring my body into, into subjection, my eyeballs, my speech. Uh, you know, like we were talking about the other week, where uh, in, in one of the Bible. Uh, Versions that says no longer be naughty. I was like, man, I'm really, I was really good at being naughty. <laughs> so and that's the thing that, that's the only thing that I can use the word with in order for me to be subjective to, for me to bury. Uh, you know, uh, I have to do that. Paul just said here, I, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection. Because if, I, if, uh, or I should say, when I do that, once again, I'm thinking of not only my eternal relationship, my which is now, with the Holy Spirit residing in me, but I'm also thinking of relationships I have today, even if I make a new one. And then, I, then in all relationships, all things work, you know, whatever. Uh, I apply the knowledge of the of the Word, and I do it not in. Oh, I hope it's all going to work out. We have pure faith that, not blind faith. People say, oh, you're just operating on blind faith. But Jesus did say, blessed are those who, who don't see but yet still believe. I guess that's where they get the idea of blind faith from. But faith, first, when uh, it says in Second Peter, now add to your faith. You know, uh, it's the very first part of Second Peter. Let me go there and read that. It says, now add to your faith. And this is one of my favorite things. Oh, I must have missed it. Yeah, there it is. That's the first letter. We don't want the first one. We want the second one. Well, it says, <clears throat> yes, starting in verse 5. But also, for this very reason, giving all diligence, or like perseverance earlier, per diligence though was like a guard, constantly on guard, watching, add to your faith. The first thing you add to your faith, so if you weren't a believer before, but now you've become a believer, at there was somewhere where the Holy Spirit in between whenever you confessed with your mouth and believed in your heart and you believed in all the works of Jesus Christ and the cross and the, and the you, there's some faith in there that causes you to confess and believe so now it, says, now it says but also for this very reason giving all diligence add to your faith virtue Virtue to knowledge. There's that knowledge again. Knowledge to self-control. I bring my body into submission there. 
self-control to perseverance. There's perseverance again. Perseverance to godliness. Godliness to brotherly kindness and then to brotherly kindness to love. Everyone's always, everyone's always like, we got to do everything in love. If you don't have all those other things stacked up straight first, it's like just like the guy I was talking to yesterday. His love for his for his old lady, you know what I'm saying, was what he had for her, but he wasn't running the race properly and he couldn't reach her. So we had to pray that somebody else would show up, you know, an auntie or, or somebody that, because, or even, God, like I said, God himself, the Holy Spirit show up. If I can talk you into it, somebody else can talk you out of it. Right? But, if you are now a person of faith, giving all diligence add to your faith virtue, the very first thing you got to put on is no longer worldly mindedness. Virtue. Well, whose virtue? Oprah's virtue? Your pastor's virtue? Your mama's virtue? It says virtue here described a quality that elicited uh, permanent. Uh, let me get past this. Later, the word signified intrinsic value, moral excellency, and goodness. It is used both of God and of persons. Many scholars feel that in biblical times, the word was commonly used to refer to manifestations of God's miracle power. Add to your faith first Jesus. He is the manifestation of God's miracle power. Besides all the other miracles, but he is the manifestation of God's miracle power. So the first thing you put on is Jesus. And with the virtue of Jesus, that will keep you on track in your relationship in order to run this race. That when someone calls you and asks you, what am I looking for? You can lead them through the word. And you do it with, with, a, with, a, a, with certainty that my word the Bible says will not come back void. Praise God. It goes, and once again, it goes then to knowledge. So you got to have virtue, or uh, you have to have uh, faith, virtue, knowledge, and then self-control. <laughs> like I said, Paul could have talked about all kinds of stuff, but he chose to talk about the kingdom of God. He had to bring his body into in in subjection. And then perseverance. And then to godliness. You know, uh, I just can't be like Jesus. Jesus was the only one that could do that. I can't do that. That's some, that's some Jesus stuff right there. You need to get you some Jesus. Well, if you're a believer, if you are a disciple, a joint heir, an empowered believer, a bride, and a child of the kingdom of God, working inside the kingdom of God, you have the same, the same power that resurrected Jesus from the dead resides in you, the Bible says. You don't need to tell people you need to go find you some Jesus. You need to speak the word of God, which is Jesus, into their lives. And Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through by me. And, and like Brother Mike was saying, you need to get that straight today. And on a daily basis, you wake up running a race that... You do it in such a manner that how you're acting won't disqualify you. If everything is humdrum or if everything is garbage all the time, and and you know, we just read that you're going to have to persevere through stuff, it says right through here, not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produ produces perseverance and perseverance of character. So right there, we know we're going to have tribulations. We know we're going to have to persevere. But what does my kingdom-minded mouth and attitude look like? Am I still a living train wreck? I cannot be that way because when we go back, uh, was it Corinthians 9? I lost my paper. A bookmark. Right? That's what I said, 1 Corinthians 9. We'll read it again. Was it? Wait. Yeah. 24 to 20. One more page. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, man. Oh, I'm missing, 
I'm in Second Corinthians. That's why there's no there's no 24th verse. <laughs> I'm like, what's going on here? I read it again. It says, "Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may <coughs> obtain it." And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things, bringing your body into subjection. Now, they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore, I run thus, not with uncertainty, thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, least when I have preached to others, I, may, I, I myself should become disqualified. That's what... It's like when someone reaches out to you as a believer. I I understand. Because like I said, I didn't grow up in church. But stepping from the biker lifestyle and even in the, the, the lifestyle of Alcoholics Anonymous, it wasn't a huge leap. I was already attending meetings. I was already reading from a book. I was already gathering together with a group of people. So the step into Christianity wasn't a huge leap. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? I was already bringing myself into this injection. Uh, I had to understand when I could or couldn't open my mouth. Because in the biker world, they tell you you're either going to get educated or physically educated. You know? So you got to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Well, my Christian path needs to be the same way. Is my speech still worldly? Is my carousing or being naughty still worldly? Have I not taken that, that old dead man stuff and buried it? Are all my cares and my woes still what drives everything that I do? Or do I bring my body in the subjection that whenever that stuff comes, those tribulations come, I can persevere with the good character that God's showing me through his word and his relationship. Like I said, <coughs> through relationship, through knowledge, through faith, through truth, and truth through surrender, by these I find what I seek. And if these are the things that I find when I seek, what else do I share with somebody else when they call me and ask me, what am I supposed to be doing? Well, let's first of all, get away from talking like the world. You keep talking like the world, right, Mike? You're going to get the world back. You reap what you sow. What you, what you sow into the garden is what you're going to reap, like, Brother Rick was saying, he used to have a whole bunch of pigs and he was hoping to reap some bacon, man. <laughs> you know, he had to get out there and, 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 and so uh, feeding them and keeping their pens clean and maybe moving around from pen to pen or, or whatever, you know. He had to work at it. If he was going to diligently run the race in order to attain the, the crown of bacon, he had to do it properly. You, you, can, you can put any analogy into this. But as a believer, when I get out there in the world, that's how I got to act. It is, it's not a act. It is my new character because, like I said before, God is not going to give us, uh, or he doesn't lack anything in his word. We're not going to get to heaven and God say, well, Gus, your character would have been so much better had I just written one more chapter. He's not going to do that. I can take every part of this word and apply it to my life today in order to help apply it into your life because that's also part of the authority he's given us. We're not meant to sit, soak, and sour. We're meant to speak into the word or speak into the world the thing that it needs the most, that it's seeking. Everybody has that last puzzle piece in the shape of Jesus. And we keep stuff and drugs in there and motorcycles and old ladies or old you know boyfriends or jobs, pigs, <laughs> and bacon. We we stuff everything else into there, hoping our lives will get better. But we just read the one thing is the word, the word is Jesus, and he's the last puzzle piece that fills it up, closes it up, makes us whole, makes us complete. And on a, daily, on a daily basis, just like with my diabetes medicine, I got I to gotta take it. This is my daily medicine for my spiritual and my physical walk. So I praise God for that word he's given me today. I thank all y'all for being here. Once again, we are part of Extended Hands Ministry. 
That's all on the Extended Hands Ministry Facebook and on the on the YouTube. There are several different ones, but ours is listed under a letter E. It's in a purple circle. You click on that one, you'll see my videos and Pastor Paul's videos. Go and like and all those and subscribe to it. So let's just pray right now. Heavenly Father God, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for this word, Lord God, that produces not just works, Lord God, but kingdom-minded, <clears throat> driven belief and hope and kindness and peace and, and true tolerance, Heavenly Father God, where this culture today says, unless you act just like us, we won't tolerate you. And the Christian culture only looks at the defilement of the kingdom of darkness that's on you and wants that to be removed from you. Not in hopes that you'll act like us, but that you'll no longer be possessed or act like that kingdom of darkness. The Bible says you're taken out of the kingdom of darkness and placed into <clears throat> the love of his dear son. And Heavenly Father God, that's what we want to do in this culture today. And all, and all in all steps and walks of our lives, Heavenly Father God, no matter where we're at, is speak the truth and love of what you did for us on the cross. And people can receive you today. If you need to receive Jesus today, 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 cry out. The Father will heal you. Believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth. Start hanging out with true Bible believing and, and teaching believers, Heavenly Father God. And your, and your life will not become perfect, but there will be that joy that surpasses all understanding and that peace that, per that surpasses all understanding because of relationship. We love you. We praise you and thank you for this. We lift up all pastors and youth ministers and music ministers to you this morning, Heavenly Father God, as they go out. And we pray all this in your son's name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen.